everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate and we are working on Well Groomed and this is page two and I got started working on this before I realized I hadn't hit the record so I'm gonna back up and go over my measurements with you so you guys can catch up. So again, we're on page two. There are uh, just a couple of features on page two. We've got a left and right flap and the left and right flaps are five inches, five inches across, eight inches down. You're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side. You're gonna do that two times, left and right flap. Then what I have here is a belly band slash pocket. And what makes it a pocket is I put a glue line down the center so that it doesn't pass through. And I'm actually gonna put inserts uh, on the left and the right hand side. So the belly band slash pocket is six by nine, six inches across, nine inches deep, and you're gonna score a half inch, and then you're gonna score eight and a half inches on the nine inch side, and install that centered on your base uh, eight by 10 pocket page. So you see I've got a couple of pencil lines and then my magnets, and I wanna share with you what I did there. So I closed my flap and I drew a reference line. So that's the edge of my flap. So I know my magnet needs to be to the right of that line. This is the designer paper I'm planning on using here. And so what I did was I centered it and then I also drew a reference line to the left and right and those are the outside lines so that I'd know that my magnet needs to go in between those two lines in order for it to be completely covered up and not exposed. Now, if you're doing a solid piece here, you don't need to fuss around with it that much, but I knew I was gonna be doing some color blocking, so I wanted to make sure my magnets were gonna be completely covered to the left and right. So that was my thought process there. And uh, they are when I close it. And so the next thing I'm getting ready to do, I had just inked my edges, is we are going to, sorry, we are going to, Add this, which is the flip side of what you saw on the cover, right here. And I'm gonna turn it sideways so that I can see the top and the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and erase my reference lines mm -hmm. because ideally when I color block, I'm gonna have a nice small seam between this cardstock mm -hmm. and whatever I coordinate with it. And that pencil mark is likely to show up there. Okay, there we go. So now, I went ahead and put a pencil mark on my center line and it looks like it's not right. I just noticed it looks like it's off center. So I think this is three and a quarter. It is. So if it's, it's three and a quarter. Yeah, my center line was off. So now I need to double check and make sure my magnets are still okay. And I use this Tim Holtz ruler all the time to find my center lines. It's really nice to have. So I'm gonna line up the tick mark here and here. I use those to center the belly band on the base page. There's my center line. There's my center line. And this side is a little tight. So let me double check that. Did I, am I using the right reference line? Nope, we're good to go. I have two reference lines and I was using the wrong one. Okay, just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and go through that process one more time. Do I keep doing it wrong? It's driving me nuts now. <laughs> Hang tight, guys. One and a half plus, so it'd be one and five eighths. And it is, it's one and five eighths. The pattern's monkeying around with my eyes, so that is one and five eighths, so that's gonna work fine. So I've already inked the edges. I'll get some glue on here, take off my tape.
So again, this is three and a quarter by seven and seven eighths. And it happened to just be a, a scrap that I had from trimming off the, um, the A side of the two flaps. So it could be anything you want. You could make this whole thing, this pattern, if you wanted to, but I wanted to break it up a little. All right, now I'm looking for my two little tick marks. And there's one. And there's two. And as you can see, my magnets are covered. So there we go. Now, as part of that trimming out of the 12 by 12, I also came up with these two strips. So we have a couple of options. We can line our pocket with it. Sorry, I was getting hung up on something. And then do this on either side. And then another pocket liner. Or the other option is, nope, can't do that. These are too small. Um, the other option is to put it on the outside of the flap here, like so. And then I think I had planned to trim these down to fit right here, but I'm not sure. I don't know why. I, I cut those and then I forgot what they were for. So I think I was gonna do that, but I'm not sure. I really like this blue pattern, but I don't have a lot of it, so I have to really think through where I wanna put it in the book. Um, I just like that nice tight pattern. It goes against these sort of floral patterns really nicely. So I have to think about that a little bit. Um, I think regardless of what, what I put here, I think it'll look good to have these as the pocket liners. So let's go ahead and install these. And then I will take a break and line up the rest of the inside and then monkey around with the pocket inserts till I decide what size I want and I'll include that in the cut list as well as run a banner here to let you know, you know what I'm gonna be putting in these pockets. Okay, so this is a little bit wider than what I need. So whatever is excess is gonna go right inside the pocket. And it's not much, but a little bit. Okay, okay and then we're gonna back it out a little bit. Get it right where we need it. There we go, looks good. Use my bone folder, make sure it's pressed down on the inside higher than I wanted, but it still looks very nice. When you do black, okay, I just wanna make sure I was keeping track of what was right side up. When you use black, it's pretty forgiving. So I'm gonna do this side, and it is inked. Decide the orientation I want this. And I think this one, this way. Okay. So I will want to trim down um, two strips to fit here. This is our pocket right there. 
And again, I, I need to trim this out. I haven't decided. Uh, and remember, there's a glue line down the middle. That's why these aren't going to pass through. So there'll be an insert on the left and on the right. And as soon as I finalize the size for these, I will let you know. And um, so the next thing is I'm going to take a break, uh, figure out what this is going to be and what these are going to be. And it's most likely that I'm going to use an ephemera card here, but I haven't decided. So that's still kind of up in the air. Okay, so that is page two. Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And um, so I was putting the book together because I thought I was done. And when I started going through all the flips and flaps, I realized I didn't finish page two and page seven. So I have my papers lined up and I'm ready to do that now. <laughs> so it's in the book and that's why I didn't even realize it. It was closed and I thought I was finished. So I picked out these blue strips. Um, so right here is the belly band slash pocket. So I'm gonna add these blue strips and then we're gonna add these two yellow panels and the pocket liner and we'll be done with page two. So this won't take very long at all. I think I've got everything trimmed to fit. Hopefully it'll go quickly. And then we will go back and wrap up page seven. Same thing, I, I didn't finish the inside of page seven. I, I was thinking, man, I really thought I was gonna have less paper left over. What, I must have miscalculated. And then uh, after I covered all this, I was like, oh, that's why. I skipped the B side on two pages. Oops, no ink. This I might actually need to test. Make sure it's not too tight. I prefer to do this out of the um, book, especially when I'm deep, when I need to line a pocket because um, it's already done. I did that outside of the pocket, but it's really hard to get things inside the pocket when it's in the book. Um, you just have a lot less flexibility. So luckily the stuff that I had not done, at least for page two, is pretty easy to do in or out of the book. Okay, let's add this. All right, so I one of the things I did when making this book is I know not not everybody is crazy for animals or can you know figure out how to use an animal print. And so I pulled it in, but also you could see with a few substitutions or flipping the pa paper over, it doesn't have to be animal at all. Um, like look at this layout. You wouldn't know that this was um, pet paper. You can't tell. So I kind of um, downplayed some of that so that it's a little bit more flexible and that so you guys could see um, how you might be able to downplay some of those very, very strong images. Now some of the other stuff, I do use some of the paws. So it's in here, but it's, I kind of do the same thing when there's just strong images of people. I kind of downplay that um, because I, it's, I just can't imagine putting a photo on a scrapbook page that has you know a woman's face on it because then your picture is competing with that woman's face i can see it on the cover but or on the a sides but if it's on the b sides or on the um centerpiece i, I just don't want my photographs competing with that image so it's just my my thought process everybody's a little different not only matters if you're using it for a photo album, if you're making a journal, it doesn't really matter, right? You can have as bold as images as you want. Okay, we've got a couple of inserts for this. And remember, this is glued in the center so it doesn't pass completely through. There we go. <laughs> Page two is done. Really done. <laughs> 